As innovations in space launch technology become more and more advanced, one startup is risking it all by going for a more medieval approach. Shooting rockets into space with a slingshot. Three questions come to mind. Who's doing this? Why are they doing it? And how does it work? A California-based startup called Spin Launch is currently developing an alternative rocket launch technology that spins a vacuum-sealed centrifuge at several times the speed of sound before releasing the payload, launching it in a catapult-like fashion up into orbit. Speaking to CNBC, Spin Launch CEO Jonathan Yaney said, It's a radically different way to accelerate projectiles and launch vehicles to hypersonic speeds using a ground-based system. This is about building a company and a space launch system that is going to enter the commercial markets with a very high cadence and launch at the lowest cost in the industry. Since their whole business model is based on great service at a low cost, you already know that SpaceX's senses tingled at the thought of a cheaper space launch provider. But does this somewhat wacky idea idea even work? Instead of launching rockets vertically from the ground using massive amounts of fuel, Spin Launch plans to spin them inside a massive centrifuge and use that built-up energy to slingshot them to high altitudes, where they can use relatively small rocket engines to cover the final distance to orbit. As you'd expect, all of this is a lot easier said than done. But after years of media coverage and many renders of sleek rockets, Spin Launch finally performed the first test flight of its one-of-a-kind kinetic energy-based launch launch system in New Mexico on October 22nd, which we'll get into shortly. Despite being a colossal 165 feet tall technological marvel, the suborbital accelerator prototype is three times smaller than the proposed orbital accelerator. It's almost scary to think about what the final product from Spin Launch will look like. If you're wondering why this is the first time you're hearing about this wild new space launch system, it's probably because this has been one of the best kept secrets in the entire space industry for quite some time now. Founded in 2014 by Jonathan Yaney, the company has done a pretty good job of staying low-key and working with no outside interference. Yaney explained that the company's choice to keep a low profile was due to its super high ambitions. I find that the more audacious and crazy the project is, you are better off just working on it, rather than being out there talking about it. We had to prove to ourselves that we could actually pull this off. If you're feeling optimistic about this, you've got company. Spin Launch has raised $110 million to date from investors. Standing at about 165 feet, the Spin Launch suborbital accelerator is actually taller than the Statue of Liberty. It may seem a bit excessive, but Yaney emphasized that it's the size the company needs to really prove the technology. According to Yaney, the vacuum chamber holds a rotating arm that accelerates the projectile to super high speeds, and then, in less than a millisecond, releases the vehicle for launch. The suborbital projectile is about 10 feet long, but can go as fast as the orbital system needs, which is many thousands of miles an hour. The thousand-ton steel vacuum chamber maintains the low pressure required for a carbon fiber tether to spin at incredibly high speeds while minimizing aerothermal heating. Air is sucked out of the chamber prior to launch to allow for a low-friction environment, enabling the projectile to reach a speed of thousands of miles per hour before being launched out of the skyward-facing tube. Yaney believes that spin launch can essentially validate its aerodynamic models for what its orbital launch vehicles are going to be like, allowing the company to try out new technologies when it comes to release mechanisms. Yaney also disclosed that Spin Launch's first suborbital flight only utilized about 20% of the accelerator's full power capacity for the launch, and reached a test altitude in the tens of thousands of feet. The first test flight vehicle didn't have a rocket engine on board, but Spin Launch plans to add engines and other internal systems in later suborbital test flights. The current Spin Launch test schedule will have the company conducting about 30 suborbital test flights over the next six to eight months from Spaceport America. Spin Launch's entire business model is very eco-friendly in comparison to traditional launch systems. And on top of that, the company also plans to recover and reuse its vehicles, with Yaney noting that they had recovered the first one. It is also completely flyable, which is great for everyone involved in the refurbishment department. Conventional rocket launches are not only super expensive, but are also bad for the environment. One launch generates several hundred tons of carbon dioxide, uses thousands of gallons of water, and can also release harmful nitrous oxides into the atmosphere. Still, you should know that the space industry's carbon footprint is dwarfed by that of passenger airlines. Yaney told CNBC that Spin Launch not only aims to provide a vastly more substantial launch system, but it's also set the goal of providing satellite launch services at the lowest cost in the industry. How exactly will they achieve this? Easy. 
Spin Launch has developed a launch system that is not reliant on rocket fuel and instead uses electricity, kinetic energy, and a centrifugal mechanism that looks like a modern twist on a medieval contraption. Calling it a New Age Space Trebuchet sounds crazy, but is probably an accurate description. If all goes according to plan, Spin Launch says it can reduce the cost of sending satellites into orbit by a factor of nearly 20, which is absolutely nuts to think about. Also, the company believes that it will eventually be able to launch up to five rockets per day, which all other launch companies can't even do in a month yet. Spin Launch is currently finalizing the design of its full-scale system, with Yaney saying that testing has eliminated about 90% of the system's risk to date. Traditional rockets use a huge booster, usually with several engines to lift off the ground. That means that most of the rocket's mass at liftoff is fuel, with only a small percentage of its total mass dedicated to carrying payloads. Spin Launch plans to rewrite the entire rocket equation with their new system greatly reducing the size, cost, and complexity of rockets. The spin launch design for its orbital vehicle would be able to carry about 440 pounds of payload to orbit, equivalent to a few small satellites. Spin launch is now finalizing an agreement for the location of its first orbital launch system, with the company's CEO disclosing that it will not be at Spaceport America, but rather at a coastal location. According to Yaney, it should be a site that is able to support dozens of launches per day. Like every other ambitious new project, spin launch has its fair share of challenges and warranted criticism. As most investors drool over Spin Launch's potential, some aerospace engineers are still wary. One of the most valid critiques is that the rocket will have to endure extremely high forces inside the centrifuge, like 10,000 times the strength of gravity kinda high. By contrast, your typical traditional rocket only bears forces five to seven times stronger than gravity at launch. A former Spin Launch employee who chose to remain anonymous spoke to Wired and said that a centrifuge is an unsophisticated sophisticated machine that an average engineer team could put together. Spin Launch says it will be easy to optimize payloads for kinetic launch. Even so, there's absolutely no room for error. Even the smallest issue could tear the orbital accelerator apart if it occurs at launch speed. Some physicists also have concerns about the challenge of air resistance. Earth's atmosphere is very dense, which means that the launched cargo would need to be engineered to withstand resistance and g-forces. Based on leaked images of dart-shaped launch vehicles, the solution might be as simple as good aerodynamics. According to Yaney, the core launch technology has been developed, built, and tested over the last three years. He said that the remaining challenges are in the construction and associated areas that all massive hardware development and construction projects face. The science behind spin launch is nothing new. Its guiding principle is more or less similar to mass accelerator technology, which has been in development since the 1960s. Today, there are existing technologies like electromagnetic rail and coil guns, light gas guns, ram accelerators, accelerators, and blast wave accelerators. Nearly every iteration of this technology has been a weapon, and seeing it used for space launches is very refreshing. NASA has also toyed with the concept of a catapult-assisted launch system, but unlike spin launch, NASA's design uses a launch rail instead of a centrifuge. Unfortunately for catapult fans, neither spin launch nor NASA's projects are cost-effective enough to commercially launch cargo into space, yet. SpaceX is still the creme de la creme of space launch companies right now, and for the foreseeable future too if spin launch doesn't prove its worth soon. Speaking to TechCrunch, Yaney explained why spin launch would stand out in a rapidly flooding launch market. Spin launch employs a rational acceleration method, harnessing angular momentum to gradually accelerate the vehicle to hypersonic speeds. This approach employs a dramatically lower cost architecture with much lower power. So just how much cheaper is it going to be compared to traditional launches? Spin launch should cost around $50,000 per launch, while a typical rocket-based launch costs around five to 100 million per trip. One of the most appealing things about spin launch is that once it is developed, the reduced cost per launch should open up space cargo delivery to a wider market. For now, only time will tell if spin launch can get its affairs in order and test fire its catapult for real. Once they overcome the technical challenges, it will offer an interesting alternative to conventional rockets. If spin launch is successful, it will significantly reduce the cost of space travel and potentially trigger a new era of low to zero gravity innovation. Spin launch has the potential to catapult space-based industries, no pun intended. From space travel to space mining, the possibilities are endless. Until next time, welcome to the future.